Here is another video request from one of our viewers. They wanted to know how you could frame a wall like this that is stepping down. And there are a variety of different ways to do it. And most of the time, a carpenter like myself is simply just going to measure the difference between the framing plates and assume that the concrete foundation is straight and could create imperfections for your walls. So to eliminate that, I'm going to go ahead and provide you with a couple of methods that might work better. Starting with the first one where we will set up two batter boards and then use a water level or some type of an electronic laser level or even a builder's level to establish the level points that we need on each one of the boards. And I do have another video on how to use a water level if you're looking for an inexpensive way to figure out the level line that we're going to place on this board. And that level point will create a level line off of the top of this framing plate. If your walls need to be higher, then you will need to compensate for that measurement. Now, even though I set up the batter board here, you can get rid of it and drive a nail or use some screws to place at the top of the framing plate to hold your string line because we are simply going to connect a string line from this nail here or this one over here to this one on this batter board. And this might not be necessary either. You can establish the height of the wall and then frame the height of the wall and then run your string line from the top of this wall here to the top of this framing plate and forget about the batter boards completely. So again, the batter boards will just provide you with another option if that is going to work better for you. So again, we're going to tie a string to the nails so that we can create a straight line across here that is going to be level. And then we're going to use that line to measure the wall framing studs. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the 2x4s. And it might not be a bad idea to create a stake-like board, something you can drive into the ground, because you are not going to want these boards to move. Make sure that they are braced off and firmly positioned because the last thing you want will be for these things to move while you're working on your project. And yes, I've had this happen before. I might have been framing a section like this and then walked around, bumped into this, knocked it out of whack, and then had to fix it. So your framing plates will usually be anchored to the concrete foundation with anchor bolts or some type of building hardware. And in order to calculate the height of the framing studs, you can simply cut a board like we have here or simply measure from the top of the framing plate to this line here and then subtract three inches. You're going to need to subtract the width of the upper framing plates. Remember, this line here represents the top of our framing plate or the top of the wall that the joists are going to sit on. So again, top of the framing plate, top of the framing plate, and then we will subtract the width of our framing plates, which in our case will be three inches. And then of course you can cut the rest of your framing studs and frame the lower wall. And again, once we have the height of this wall established and it's nice and straight. Now, don't forget, you can always install the batter boards on the other side and run a string line across these two sides here if you're worried about the imperfections in the foundation. And I know it sounds a little overkill, but I didn't have to worry about this when I was building my own stuff. However, I would have to worry about it if someone else did the concrete and I was going to do the framing. And a lot of that had to do with the imperfections in the form boards, where you might have a form board that was crowned down on this side and then crowned up on the other side, or a form board that would have been crowned down to the middle and then crowned down to the side. And again, once you have everything straight, all of your framing is straight for these walls, then your floor is going to be nice and straight. You're not going to have any bows or dips in that either. And you could always install a block here if you need it. Remember, this is a cutout for the other wall top framing plate that's going to lap over this wall. 
which you'll see here in a little bit where we have the top framing plate this framing plate on this wall here extending past a little bit to connect to this wall here and you can always extend this framing plate a little further if it's going to work better for your string line and then cut it off later and of course an example of the different nails you could put in the framing plate to attach your string to if you aren't going to use your batter boards next up let's go ahead and attach our string line and make sure that the string line is nice and tight and straight so that we can start measuring our framing studs and something else I did in this video, I had a couple of complaints in the other videos that I made about the step down foundations where some of the viewers suggested that we should have treated lumber here. And by all means, go ahead and install some treated lumber here. Or you can do what I did here and extend this past about an eighth or a quarter of an inch and then nail your construction standard lumber to this plate and nail it into it. And of course, this will provide us with a gap between the construction standard lumber and the concrete. And then we're simply going to grab a 2x4, or you can measure the distance, and then subtract for the framing plates. And again, in our case, we are going to be subtracting for two framing plates, or three inches. Another thing to consider would be to grab two scrap pieces of lumber and place them on top of your newly cut wall framing stud to make sure that the framing plates are at the same height and one is not higher or lower than the other. Because most of the time we need to cut these blocks a little bit smaller. I usually cut them an eighth of an inch smaller, for example, instead of subtracting three inches. I usually subtract three and an eighth inches when working with a situation like this. And again, you could simply measure from the top of the framing plate to the top of the string to calculate the height of your wall framing studs. Or you could always use one board as a guide board. And to do this, I would grab one board, mark it, and then check the rest of the wall framing studs to see if there are any variations in the framing. And if there are, then you could adjust for them when you're cutting your studs. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about that method. So if it doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. And after I have cut all of my wall framing studs, I can go ahead and attach my wall framing plates and hope like heck that everything is nice and straight because if one of these wall framing studs is an eighth of an inch too high or an eighth of an inch too low you could end up with a small dip or a small crown in the wall and that could create a problem again for your floor and again, I really cannot stress this enough. Make sure that all of this stuff is straight and level. Now in our next example, I'm going to go ahead and raise the framing plates. Again, you can use a string on top of the framing plates or use your batter boards or guide boards here and then calculate the height of the wall here or here and then calculate the difference and then use this length here from your string and then simply add the length that you have calculated to the top of the string line to calculate the height of your new wall framing studs. So instead of going from here down, we're going to go from here up. And again, subtract for your framing plates and double check all of your measurements to make sure that everything is right before you get started. Make sure that you're starting with something that is right on the money. And of course, another thing you could do will be to raise or lower the string line if that's going to work better for you. Put it at the top of the framing studs, or I could extend the length of this and have it up here going all the way over to here and then simply compensate for the difference. Now here's something else you can use if you have nice and straight truss joists. We can go ahead and get rid of the string. And this is actually how I would frame this. And you're going to save a couple of dollars on your truss joists also. And you might be able to save a few more dollars by framing your wall this way and going with a 16 inch on center layout. And again, these blocks can always be pressure treated here. And we're simply going to build a wall that will be even with the top of the joist so that we don't need to spend more money 
And in my opinion, this is going to provide us with a stronger structural connection. Now I'm using a single top plate here just to provide you with another example. You can always double up the top plates and you will simply start your layout from the outside and space accordingly to whatever your on-center layout will be. You shouldn't need to put a truss up against the wall and the wall will be laid out 16 inches on center for your new step down wall. And the last thing I want to point out is how I laid out all of the framing studs at 16 inches on center from this side and went this way. So I'm not using two boards here to reduce the amount of lumber in the wall here, if this idea will work better for you. So again, just another thing to consider for when you're planning your project. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.